Hello everyone, before we start today's video, if you could all do me a solid and lightly tap the like button, perhaps share the video about and leave a comment. If you are not subscribed, subscribe as well. It would greatly help this channel. Thank you very much. Captain's Log, Subdate 220805.3 I've passed a law that bans unions now. No one should be allowed unions on my boat. Now my crew are salty and seeking revenge. I reckon they'll go for Bork, as he ended up granting to Spoon, who in turn told me. Hello everyone, welcome to this week at Twitter, or twat. Today I'd like to talk about Deaf Noodles. Deaf Noodles very recently got his Twitter account back. I had thought, perhaps, the lessons had been learned from the, is it Millie Bobby Brown thing that got him yeeted in the first place. Maybe the lol suit with Keemstar will go the way of the dinosaurs because it is a lol suit. What do you really expect to get out of it? Perhaps, with those lessons learned, a new leaf. Of course, the word perhaps is, um, sarcasm, if you didn't know already, because he got back and immediately went to work. Now, as a creator, we all use it to promote Twitter, that is, our content. I do all the time. I promote videos on this channel, Electric Boogaloo, my reading channel, live streams on Moisky Live, and on Twitch. I do that because I know there is a chance some will see my content on Twitter and follow the links and support me by watching, liking, subscribing, following, and so on if they choose to. When Def Noodles lost his ability to tweet, on every account he made, it would be wrong to believe that that did not have a negative impact on his channel. It certainly played a part, along with him being an insufferable individual, along with him aligning with someone like Ethan Klein, who is also quite insufferable. When it comes to optics, the A-star comedian who says it's just a jerk bruh, but can't see a jerk bruh, or will not allow others to say it's just a jerk bruh, it can be regarded as quite amusing that Def Noodles still doesn't quite understand satire, when he himself believes himself to be a funny guy. I'll play a clip of him being funny in a bit. As we do have a number of interactions to go through, I want to get some order from it, but there are going to be gaps. I will try and fill it in. Def Noodles' more recent interactions have included the likes of Papa Gut, so much so that Def Noodles was trending at least twice since getting his account reinstated. It's interesting to note that at present, I'm no longer blocked. I think all the blocks are removed and he has to do it again. Which is fine, if you want to block me for being critical of perhaps some rather poor choices on your part, you're well within your right to do that, Dennis. But know this, I don't mean any ill intent with what I say, but I do believe from you there is ill intent. Either that or the most remarkable level of ignorance. And irony. There's a lot of irony. So the first time that Deaf Noodles was trending, I'm going to go through a few tweets from that. Deaf Noodles is literally a commentary channel. Every commentary channel is about stupid drama, needless beef, and false accusations. We'd condemn Deaf of engaging in the same BS that's plagued the platform for years. A fair point. Is Deaf Noodles' final joke trying to go Kaufman by making himself look as bad as possible so he can then go, I got you, I faked a her thing. But the tweet that got Deaf Noodles trending, MF, got famous on TikTok for joking about effing 14 year old girls, then gets offended someone jokes about him. But you know, he was right. I shouldn't have said that. I should have instead said he makes himself so small in his videos to hide the fact he looks like a paedophile. Now it should be noted with regards to Def Noodle's tweet on the 28th of July, there is actual additional context from Papa Gut. We will get to that soon. We're going to go first through Def Noodles. This is the Michelin Man. Michelin Man likes to talk tough, but he's soft like a marshmallow. He hides in his mom's house and makes excuses to not go out in public. Michelin Man is an incel. Don't be Michelin Man. This joke would have been funnier if you wrote, Stay puffed, Marshmallow Man. But I guess you couldn't find an image with a form of body insecurity on it. But what's really fascinating about this tweet is, in the replies, you had apparently put this tweet out multiple times, because the joke hadn't landed the first two. Now, I firmly believe in science, of course, 
In experimentation, if you've ever done an experiment in your lifetime or been in a laboratory, you'd know you should do a test three times to get an accurate result. Apparently, third time is indeed the charm. As your comedian, might I recommend, if the joke doesn't resonate with your audience, change the joke to something more apropos, if you know what that means. So Papa Gut put out a tweet, a thread with a number of explanations, along with two images, the first being Dennis's tweet, the second being a reply. The joke was, if she's old enough to bleed, she's old enough to breed, thank you very much, Andreas Lopez for the advice. It was a satirical call-out since he allegedly slept with a 14-year-old. It is a joke I have condemned multiple times, but that person isn't interested in honesty. Robbie Rotten underneath, they don't care about context, obviously a bit like Deaf Noodles now. That's interesting. Thank you Deaf Noodles for quote-tweeting my full and honest explanation as to the joke that I've condemned multiple times. That was meant to call out alleged predatory behaviour as you attempt to slander me. It's additionally interesting that we talked about this in a live conversation, so you already understand the full context, or you should if you are actually listening. The reality is, I've put my platform on the line to deplatform multiple predatory content creators. Joe Robe, Official Gemini, while you intentionally misrepresent situations constantly to sensationalize a story. Using false pedophilia accusations to try and deplatform someone is absolutely disgusting and invalidating to actual abuse and molestation survivors. But it's clear you don't actually care about that. Repsion, holy hell, how is he this retarded? Context matters in all situations. Apparently to Dennis, no, because you said a joke and I'm the authority on that. Puppagut then also tweeted, I decided to put up my response to the situation from my live stream. It gets raw and emotional towards the end, which is embarrassing for me, but I feel the need to put it out. Dennis, I hope you get everything you deserve in your life. Underneath, a link to the video in question. It is 16 minutes long and it is worth watching. It is worth listening to. Because it is vitally important when you make such accusations like Deaf Noodles did, you understand how much it can hurt someone. These kinds of accusations can run the risk of ruining a person's life. Oh, but their career on YouTube, I'll be honest, their life. The whole thing. And what you've done, Deaf Noodles, is by definition a form of slander. It's quite interesting to me that before you got your Twitter back, you were considering a lol suit or pursuing a lol suit with Keemstar because of slander, libel, and other things. Yet you have done the exact same thing here. You did the same thing. One rule for me, but not for thee, apparently. That is not good. You've been moaning a lot about loss of views recently. This is why. Because people are starting to realize, more are starting to realize. Your ability to objectively cover news stories which you try and put out there as actual news but actually sensationalize so it's not of much importance as you think there is, akin to that of a vlogger bedroom time story thing, so Gabby Hanna in the beginning, can only go so far. And you know this. Shelby with an E. You're literally suing Keemstar for the exact thing you just did to Papa Gut. Why is it defamation when it happens to you, but a joke when you do it to others? This is a valid question, man, not an attack. Deaf Noodles. You're suing someone doing the same thing? With, you know, capitalizations all over the place because how dare he? One, my bio says comedian. Two, since 2019, I've said I cover news as a joke and wasn't meant to be taken seriously. New York Magazine interview. Three, saying someone looks like a pedo isn't an accusation, especially when they objectively look like a pedo. Underneath, but don't worry, I'm doing a man on the street next week on Hollywood Boulevard to get to the bottom of this. Does this MF look like a pedophile? Wonder what the results will be like. For anyone interested, I speak about my work long before any of this BS and the satirical and parody aspects of it on this comedy podcast. One of the best comedy podcasts in the country. You forgot to also link your, um, cash app? Yeah. The thing here is, one, you're a comedian. Fantastic. You're not an authority on comedians. Two, in the context of what you've put out there, you didn't just say they looked like a paedophile, did you, Dennis? And you can't fob it off as just a joke because you can't take a joke and because this wasn't a joke. And you know that, Dennis. This is horrendous. Ever since this began, you have lost over 9,000 subscribers, a daily average of 230 negative. Your video views used to be in the hundreds of thousands a day, and now they're plummeting. You are losing credibility. You are losing respect. You have no integrity nor dignity. You can fob things off as a joke when it suits you, but if you can't see, when you have crossed the very line you accuse others of crossing, it tells us how elitist you consider yourself. Chris the Narc. 
The problem is that your satire has completely effed people over multiple times, and you have been caught in multiple lies when it comes to stories about other creators. I actually think you don't know who is real, Dennis or Deaf Noodles. Jaker, Papa Gut is Deaf Noodles' dad. He just spanked him again and put him on timeout. Accompanying that are two images. The first, Deaf Noodles, I want to thank all the drama channels for making videos sensationalizing my jokes. I've been trying to pivot away from drama for the last seven months, and you're all doing me a favor. The more drama seekers leave my pages, the less I have to cater to them, so please keep it coming. Interesting take on this. Papa Gut, I'm actually happy I'm losing views and subscribers. Cry. <laughs> If I was going through what Deaf Noodles is going through, I would be in some form of damage control, panic mode, rebuild quickly without courting too much controversy. I love what I do by the way, and I'm not really a drama channel, I just cover dumb crap on Twitter. And stupid people everywhere. Some are online, some are offline. But I'll happily sensationalize your mad jokes, cause they're so funny. You made me belly laugh. Out of my asshole. Deaf Noodles. Who could have seen this coming? Papa Gut says he's suing Deaf Noodles because I made a joke saying he looks like a paedophile, which he does. In fact, he looks like an alcoholic Santa Claus who touches children at the mall. Anyway, please go ahead. Would love to discuss in court. Underneath, dude says he's unbothered, then says he's suing me because that's the most unbothered thing you can do. Everyone underneath is telling you you're harassing him now. Everyone. This is mental. I'm assuming they're all sensationalizing as well and misinterpreting your jokes. Okay. Well, I think now is a good time to play one of your jokes that had many people feel like it was a rip-off of something from SNL. Sorry, I put the second one in because the first one didn't make me laugh enough. But thankfully the second one really, really helped. And for those who commented on my tweet about this saying, ah, but he's keeping in shape and all that, couldn't care less. The technique is horrendous. You want to get the most out of your workout? Learn to box. Swinging like that is done as a form of catharsis. It is not done as a form of workout. You gas too quickly, by the way. I noticed. Your technique was sloppy. You telegraphed your shots. They were too wide. You looked like you were going to hug the bag. Now, as a final thing, I'd like to pass on a message to Dennis. I get that you believe you know what is funny, but you seem to give off the impression you cannot understand when others don't agree with that, when they consider it to be not funny in the context of what you are saying and who you are saying it to. Context matters for jokes. It matters for everything. It should matter. Comedy is great, of course it is, and we all love to laugh about something, but there is nothing in what you have said that the vast majority found funny. You know this from your own analytics, and yet you are saying that they, they're the weak ones, they're leaving because they're just the drama chasers. Yet you built that community. That is the community you built. With the cat ears, the Minecraft house, you did that. You are now alienating them because you've decided you're better than them. You used them to get to where you are now. And they are leaving in droves because you still will not admit you got something wrong. And that is really important as a creator. To be able to say when we are wrong shows a level of humility, something we have rarely seen from you. As a creator, maybe not on your level, I know you're so much bigger than me. Please don't appeal to authority or appeal to popularity. I couldn't care less for fallacies and it doesn't take away from my original point. Please don't be so arrogant as to think you are above everyone that has supported you over the years, even when you on multiple occasions lied on the very Twitter account you are still using to fob off lies, fake news, as, but it's just a joke, bruh. It doesn't work, and you know it doesn't. Whatever your plan is to go forward as a creator to thrive and succeed, you might want to consider enacting this evil plan of yours because whatever you're doing currently is not working.